say hello to the bad guy, Scott Hall, and I've got a scoop for you. And we all know there's a lot of podcasts out there, but I encourage you to check out this one. It's called Going In Raw. You heard it here first. Going In Raw. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw News Brief. We're going to try to keep this one brief. Bro. Later on today, we do have Interdimension Tension 2 yeah, coming up. Yeah, an hour or so. For patrons right now Yeah, I'll put it right now. An hour from we're shooting this is noon, our time, Pacific time We've on got, Wednesday. So at 1 o'clock, yeah. Pacific West uh, Wednesday. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've got the kickoff show for patrons. Yes. Uh, so that's Two a matches. lot of fun. Two matches. Yes. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. Yes. Patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Oh, yeah. No, What's in no. the news? Also, YouTube.com forward slash Stephen Larson for channel members. Yes, correct. What's in the news? Matt Riddle's still in the news. No. Oh. This story has legs. <laughs> you could say. So, of course. How many different still shots of Brock and Matt Riddle do I have to find for these thumbnails every as long single day? They keep day. giving us these juicy, juicy one liners. We got to roll with it. So, of course, we've gone through the entire saga of Brock. Telling uh, Matt Riddle, apparently at the Rumble, hey, uh, keep my name out of your tweets because we're never working together. Yeah, that was basically what he what said. Yeah. Well, today. Ever. ever. Oh, by the way, uh, we have, we put Beast Fears Bro shirts up at our Teespring. Until we get a cease and desist, they'll be up. So you better get your hands on them While as quick yep. as possible. So uh, today, WWE's Performance Center. So this is an officially released thing. It's official. It's official. Uh, released on their YouTube a video uh, about uh, Matt Riddle's Rumble experience. The yeah. highs, the lows. It's a short video, like five two and minutes. minutes. It's two and a half minutes. Oh, is that all it is? Yeah, two and a half? Short. Okay. And the uh, original bro seems completely undeterred when it comes to getting his match against Brock, saying, and these transcripts are from Fightful, quote, I really wanted to get my hands on Brock, and there's B-roll of Brock you know, in, in the rumble. I saw him throwing everyone around. I don't care what he says or anybody else says. I don't care if he wants the match or not. I'm going to get it. I don't care. It's not up to him. I don't like being told no, especially when I work as hard as I do. I guarantee you, I will get my hands on him and I will make the match happen. I take his career. Whoa, I promise. Oh, I take his career. I promise. Doubling down. Oh, that's amazing. And this is all after this conversation, this this altercation, more like a conversation, uh, apparently, I would guess, took place. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was. Yeah. This, so, is, this is after his Rumble appearance. Yeah. Uh, so, I okay, so then you have to ask yourself, is the backstage stuff a work? Is it is it real? Is it fake? Is it manufactured? Uh, do were there cameras present? Are we gonna get that aspect of things? Uh, I don't know. Was he told stop doing this by a higher up, and he's still doing it? Is he just doing it even because Brock said stop doing it? I well, say he doesn't like being told no. He doesn't like being told. Here's the thing: Matt Riddle has a lot of leverage. What are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? Yeah, you know what's gonna be telling is in Portland uh, when they get because the, the Broserweights. By mm -hmm. the way. That final's happening tonight. So we'll find out. Hey, look, if the grizzled young veterans win tonight, maybe it'll be seen as punishment for Riddle. If they he's don't. Not, he's not getting punished in NXT. He's not getting he's punished. He's not getting punished in NXT. No. Not. No. Uh, a while back, Triple H asked about, uh, I think in relation to Riddle's uh, tweets about Goldberg. And Triple H more or less said, well, it's his opinion. Yeah. Social media. He's a big boy. I think that's what he said. Essentially. Yeah, he could do it. Yeah, you can do what he wants. I don't think Triple H cares. I think Triple H sees this is a guy who's going out there and trying to make a name for himself, try to create some programs for himself that'll make himself some money. Yeah. And 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 put him in high profile position. He probably thinks that's pretty uh, advent not adventurous, but uh, pretty smart of the guy. I mean, it's the modern day equivalent of walking into Vince's office and trying to get The Rock off of the WrestleMania main event card. That's what Triple H apparently WrestleMania did. WrestleMania 15, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm I'm sure that Triple H is probably fine with this. Yeah, he's not going to no get problem. punished. Uh, so yeah. However, mm. according to PW Insider, in light maybe of the recent Matt Riddle Brock Lesnar kerfuffle at the Rumble, uh, apparently NXT talents have been told to keep main roster names out of their tweets. Mm -hmm. Here's the full quote uh, as transcribed by Wrestle Talk. Quote. I'll, I'll go ahead with All it. All right. In regard to stories that Brock Lesnar and Matt Riddle had a run in at the Royal Rumble backstage. 
where Lesnar made it clear to Riddle, who constantly talks about retiring Lesnar on social media, that he will never work with Riddle, so he should knock it off. There's absolutely truth to the story, to the point that earlier today, during a media class at the WWE Performance Center, there was a specific mention of not tweeting and calling out talents from Raw and SmackDown without their knowledge, which got a big laugh from the NXT talents in attendance. One thing that stands out, end quote, one thing that stands out to me is when Keith Lee and Matt Riddle during that little video were, you know, marveling at the size. The camera was following them yeah, too. Yeah. Was marveling at the size of the of the arena of the venue. Uh, Keith Lee said something along the lines of, "Man, you know, we'll be surprised if we're even in this." Well, thing. he's talking about the unpredictable nature of the Rumble, right? Exactly. And there is a laugh between the two of them that indicated to me maybe that they weren't quite aware if they were going to get into the Rumble at all. Um, and we've heard numerous times that WWE talents are not made aware of things until, you know, b until at some point it's like right before they're supposed to do them. Right. Exactly. And so, uh, so yeah, I mean, this, I understand here, here's the thing. Once you are, I mean, we do, I don't know. It's silly because we do see raw, some raw talents talking to SmackDown talents on social media from time to time. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that stuff doesn't go anywhere. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just generally good advice. If you don't want to write, raise the ire of the old man who has this thing about talents being vocal uh, about feuds that aren't going to happen, uh, maybe it's just good form. Um, also, uh, while it says there's a mention of, of not uh, mentioning uh, uh, Raw or SmackDown talents without their knowledge, a considering that it was the, the, this mention elicited uh, a, a huge laugh from those in attendance, uh, we don't know the context in which this That's comment true was too. made. Yeah. Was it a situation where it was made humorously? Um, you know, just kind of say, "Hey, don't do it." Uh, it's probably a good rule of thumb, and, or or was it just kind of like a joke made in the course of media class? Curious if Matt Riddle was in the room. Yeah, who knows? It might be one of those things where it's like, you know, it's like a classroom. They're ribbing him a little bit. Yeah, they're ribbing him a little bit. Or it could be the kind of thing where, you know, I don't know. There's a uh, the analogy would be like a high school class where some kid got popped for doing some silly vandalism or something. And then the teacher has to bring it up in front of the class. You know, hey, maybe don't do this. And then everybody looks at him and laughs. And it's a big joke. Uh, but, I mean, the fact that it was brought up. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know what it means. Yeah, I don't know. Either. Because because you're right. Context is everything. Yes. Um, was I was, this a stern, you know, warning to everybody there? Or was this kind of like. It sounds more like we were talking about in the first place. Like it was. Pr it's probably a legit thing. Yeah. Like, hey, maybe not a great idea to do this. <laughs> Matt Riddle. But I'm guessing uh, I would suspect it was probably delivered in a way that wasn't. Yeah. Shame right. on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. probably somewhat uh, 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 not exactly tongue in cheek, but a humorous. Uh, way of approaching things. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, I have no segue for this. Cool. Uh, Stone Cold had did, a podcast. Did any of the people in the class say, what? Maybe. There speaking you go. Speaking of guys who say, what? what? Uh, now that Edge is basically a walking medical miracle, is it possible, could it be, that another WWE Hall of Famer with a history of neck issues can make his long-awaited return to the ring? Uh, 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 uh. Stone Cold Steve Austin spoke on his latest podcast about whether Radar Superstar's return could inspire uh, a return of his own. Transcript of this via Pro Wrestling Sheet. Steve, please read this to Stone Cold. Basically, you're asking me, based on Edge's return, what I consider making a return? No. Whatever Edge is doing has nothing to do with me. I'm done. I've said already, I'm done. Yeah, Austin continues. When I see a guy who's kind of had a similar type of neck situation as I had, or neck surgery in general, and to leave the business when he did nine years ago and then come back, I'm like, okay, man, be careful out there, you know, because I haven't seen you in action, and we know it's a very physical business. You can get hurt anytime, anyway. It could be very dangerous, so please just be careful. <laughs> and that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Next, uh, Uber Facts with Kevin Nash. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's still the best that's one. That's the best one. That's the best one. Uh, so yeah, no, he's not coming. He's back. never coming back. He's made it perfectly he clear. He's made it very clear. He's this is the back. one case, Larson. This is the one case. Take this wrestler at his word. I yes, do, I do take it because I do he's take been very consistent word. for fifteen years. There's never even really been a rumor 
that he's, I mean, there was, he was like working out in the gym and he made some offhand comment jokingly to somebody about making a comeback. And that was like a year ago. Well, he said something at one point, like he, physically he probably could do another match. Right, exactly. But he would follow that up right away with, not really something I'm interested in. The the rumors about his comeback have been so thin that you can just laugh him off immediately. Uh, yeah, he seems intent. And and here's the thing: like Edge is one thing, but like I think sh- I think Steve Austin probably looks at guys like the Undertaker, like especially Shawn Michaels, who did come back, uh, and it wasn't really that special. It got more people saying, including himself, eh, I probably shouldn't have done this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I guarantee Austin was probably paying attention to that. Mm-hmm. And that probably just solidified what he already was feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to do that. It's just not. Nobody wants to see that. He went on in such a high. Like, that rock match where so he good. finally passed the torch. That was beautiful. Yep. yep. It was great. Good stuff. Uh, more good stuff. is Wednesday night. That means we get some good wrestling tonight. Uh, first, NXT preview. Uh, Ch- uh, Adam Cole learns who his uh, co- challenger at NXT TakeOver Portland is going to be. Who do you think it's going to be? Champa. Yeah, probably. He hasn't been doing anything else. He's just been cutting those videos talking about wanting to get gold. But didn't Regal, someone say it was going to be epic? The person's going to be epic? Yeah, I don't know what that means. I mean, who who uses the word epic in, in NXT? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It didn't, really, it didn't seem like it was a pun. No, or, <laughs> or a clue to who it might be. Right, yeah. Is just uh, hyping up the match. Wait, it's Tommaso Ciampa. No, there's no E in his name. <laughs> you trying to do this thing? I was trying to see if I could find the word "epic" in Champa. There's, there's no, no e. e. There's no E anywhere. <laughs> there's no P. There, Champa. Oh, wait, there is a P. P okay. Yeah. Hey, you there's can't no, do it. There's an I. Yeah, there's no E. <laughs> uh, next, Matt Riddle and Peter Dune to battle Grizzled Young Veterans in Dusty Classic Final. Nombe one. That'll be a great match. Oh, that'll be great. Uh, former best friends Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai two battle. This will mm. end in a in a wonky finish. Yeah, this has got to be a takeover. This match. has got to be a takeover. And then finally, what's next for new NXT North American champion Keith Lee? Bask in his glory. Who do you think? What do you, what do you think that's going to be? Damian Priest. Oh, Dijakovic. That'd be great if it was. Uh, AEW Butcher and the Blade versus the Young Bucks. Young Bucks really need to win this unless there's some shenanigans going on because, like, the Butcher and the Blade are not Buck Strong. No. Uh, X Lax uh, and Chris Jericho. Inner Circle, yeah. Once again, teaming up this time versus Darby Allen and Private Party. That should be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. That should be a fun match. Uh, Kip Sabian versus Cody Rhodes. That'll be a solid win. That'll be a solid match win for Cody. And then uh, John Moxley will be there. Uh, in his home state. Yeah, man. Keeping kayfabe alive. He's got that eye patch. Maybe He's- he got LASIK surgery. Uh, in one eye, yeah. I guess it's possible. Yeah, are, are people generally uh, do they have nearsightedness in a single eye? Maybe Is that only because, like, uh, I, I imagine you you were in the same boat that like both your eyes were bad, but there's probably one that was worse than the other. There is a slight variation. Oh, okay. It was like four versus four point four and a quarter, or something like that. Like my astigmatism in this eye is 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 way more pronounced. It's like barely exists in the left yeah. eye. Yeah, yeah. Or he's just keeping kayfabe alive. That could be, brother. Yeah, because I don't think he's gonna be one. Uh, yeah, you need know. to wear an eye patch, even LASIK, anyway. <laughs> it's like what two a night or two with the goggles on. You know, I should have acted in retrospect that an eye patch would be way better than those goggles I made you wear. Because I the first night I was trying to sleep in them, couldn't do it. I was like, whoop, tossed them, slept. Next morning I was like, oh, yeah. Because you're not supposed to rub your eyes yeah, for like yeah. two weeks. Yeah, for two weeks. So yeah, it's anyways. pretty crazy. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys will join us for interdimension tension too. If you don't join us live, you can catch it, uh, uh, this Saturday in VOD form. Correct. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun. Big matches on the horizon for that card. Oh yeah. Main event of course is the triple threat. Mecha Santa top notch raw gate mutant in a first time and first in a light once in a lifetime match. Correct. That's what it is. It only happened once ever for the rest of our lives. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, unless it doesn't. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. We do appreciate it. Hey man, hit that like button. Let's try to get it to six hundred and fifty-six today. Sure. All right. Does that sound good? Sounds great. All right. Let's try to do that, everybody. Thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.